Hatch has powerful tools to create monograms nearly instantly. Let's see how. In a new design window, click the monogramming tool in the lettering and monogramming toolbox. The monogramming docker opens. The quickest way to create a monogram is to choose one of the pre-made templates. You can see that Hatch has a lot of them. We can look at borders and ornaments, just borders, simple, which are lettering layouts, and the urban collection. So to use one, just click it. And there it is in the design window. Now, as long as I have it selected, if I decided, mm, I don't think that's the one I wanted, I can click another one. So let's work with this one. Even though I've selected a pre-made one, I can still change all of this. Now, probably you'll want to change the letters. So I'll select the monogram, select the letters, and I'll type in my new letters. Traditionally, in a three-letter monogram like this, the center letter is the last name. Now, currently, the style is set to four. I'll change that to one, and I can also change the font. So I'm going to pick Invitation. I'll just press I on the keyboard, and the recommended size range for Invitation is 25 to 50. Now, I've tested this, and I know that I can still make this 20 millimeters, and these columns are wide enough so that it'll sew well on a smooth fabric. So just because we have a recommendation of 25 to 50 millimeters doesn't mean you can't make it larger or smaller than that. Now I might like to change some of these ornaments. So I'll click on the Ornaments tab. And remember, you have to have your monogram selected to be able to change it. And I'm going to delete that first one, and I'll delete the second one. So they just have these. And notice that they didn't move in any closer. I'll change the margin down here, and let's try zero. And maybe I want it a little bit more space so I can put in a two, and that looks pretty good. Now let's add a border. Originally, our design did not have any borders, but I can add one. Hatch comes with borders, borders two, and urban borders. We created my borders in another lesson. I'll go to the Urban Borders. I'll select this one and click OK. Now it's a little tight around these ornaments, so I can spread that out a bit. I'll try 10. That looks pretty good. I'm also going to change the satin width. So I'll go to Properties, and I'll change the width to 3.5. I'll add another border, add. Now when you add borders, you can have up to four borders. They're all going to be the same shape, which is probably a good thing. And I'm going to change this one to a triple run. And I'm going to change the offset to zero. That puts it right down the center of this other one. Now I might want to change some colors. If we look at the monogram here in the sequence docker, if I select any one of these parts, the whole monogram is selected. It's because monograms are a special type of compound object. That makes it easy for them to be modified with the monogramming docker. If I want to color something individually, I'll need to hold down the Alt key and click on it in the design window. And maybe I'll change that to that color. I'll, I'll click on the letters and change those to this blue. The next step is to save this as an EMB design. When you save it as an EMB design, the next time you come in, you can just change the letters for somebody else or change the ornaments. Now you don't have to start with a pre-made template. Let's do one from scratch. I'll create a new document. I'll click on the monogramming tool. This time I'll go straight to letters. And I'll just type in ABC. And let's make this monogram for a baby. I'm going to select a font. I'll use Bodoni. And this one, the size is 25 millimeters, and the recommended size range for this is 15 to 20. Now, one thing we could run into here is that these stitches could get too long, and we could have no stitches there. So what I'll do is I'll click on Properties and turn on Auto Split. I'm also going to make this a bit smaller. 
but this way if I enlarge the design, I'll know that I'm safe. Now I'll select a border. Click on the Borders tab, click on the Add button, and once again I'm going to go to Urban Borders, and there's a heart in here I like, and I'll select that and I'll click OK. And now that I'm looking at this in here, I think I want to change this to this style. Click on the borders, and I'm going to change it to an outline type of motif. Our borders can be filled or they can be outlined. I'll go to Properties, I'll choose Single Motifs, and I'm going to use this wave pattern. I'll leave it at this size for now, and I'll click Close. I'll add another border, set the offset to 0. I want it as a satin, but I want it a little wider. So go back to Properties. I'll set the width to 3, and I'll go to the Effects tab. Now, If you have Digitizer, you'll also have these elastic embossed fills and you can see what it does. And you can try out different ones. I'll set this to single row and click close. Now let's add some ornaments. I'll go to the ornaments tab, click add, and I'll choose from motif. We can show these in tree view so that we can see what they really look like. I think this bow might work well, so I select that click OK, and nothing has happened here. It's added over here, but I haven't placed it on the screen yet. And I just want one right at the bottom, so I'll place it right there. It looks a little small, so let's try making it a little bit bigger. That looks pretty good. And we'll add another ornament. Click on Add from Motif. I'll go to Urban Ornaments. and we use this little B. I'll click OK. And if I don't see where I want to put it here, I can always use the advanced area. So I just want it up there in that corner. Now he's kind of overlapping my border, so I'm going to change the margin to minus one and see what that looks like. And that looks pretty good. Could make him a little smaller, but I think he's good there. So let's add one more ornament. I'll click the Add button from Motif, Monogram Ornaments. I'm looking for a little butterfly, and there he is. I'll click OK. I need to give it a position, and I just want one, and I want it over here. Click Position 1. He's kind of out of range, and he's also pointing in the wrong direction. So I'll mirror him. I'll make it smaller. Let's try 20, and maybe a little smaller. And we we'll need to change the offset. So how about minus 5, minus 6? So you can see that you're just kind of playing here. Maybe minus 8. Here we go. And I think it needs to be a little smaller. About 18.5. That looks pretty good. So there we have our design. Let's work on some colors. So I'm going to Alt click on the B. I'll make that black. I'll Alt click on the butterfly. Make that sort of this orange color. And then I'll Alt click on that. Maybe make it this lavender color. And make this color the same. I'll click on the bow, make that color, and we'll make the letters the same color as that. I think I want more contrast with the letters, so I'll alt click on the letters again, maybe make them this darker purple. So now this design is ready to save. Now, obviously, when you're designing your own monograms from scratch, you'll spend a little more time experimenting with the various fonts, the ornaments, and the borders. I can tell you, you can easily get hooked on creating your own monogram designs this way. 
Now, once I've created this, I can save it. And the next time I need to do a baby monogram, I just open it up. And then all I need to do is change the letters and maybe change some colors depending on whether it's a boy or a girl. So as a final reminder, be sure to save any files you create like this as EMB files. Then the next time, it's just a few seconds to change the letters and maybe change a color. 